This is the second year in a row we've had uh, one of KDM's 250 XE guy, fuel injected uh, two strokes as a transformer project bike. Um, interesting this year, and we, we did this because they went from 2020, they went to a new generation of machine and um, you know, they've upgraded not a lot on the bikes, um, big improvements to the engines, but probably the most standout difference is with the suspension and they've gone a couple of spring rates lighter um, on the fork and offset that with more damping. So it's a different philosophy, I guess you'd say. Um, tilted the engine forward to throw a little bit more weight on the front end of, of this bike as well. But talking to Jared, who's uh, behind the camera and he's um, the, the point guide at Transmoto for this, um, we decided to come and have a chat with uh, Derek Mayer. Um, he's part of Chris Wood's performance, who does a lot of performance stuff here for the KDM Newcastle guys with their WP, being an authorised WP dealer. Um, and I think the brief, correct me if I'm wrong, Derek, but the brief was that, you know, we want to use for pretty much everything. The bush, crowdcake, motocross. Supercross, whole, yeah. like motards, <laughs> everything. Yep. So, uh, no problem, mate, you can sort that out. No, but in all seriousness, I think Jared's feedback was that for him, the you know, with that softer spring rate, uh, he was finding on downhills, the bike was, was sitting very much on its nose. Yep. But also he said, <clears throat> as he's to begin to corner, it was knifing under him a little bit. Yep. Um, so look, you know, uh, can you give us a bit of a, you know, bit of a, I guess, a top line. You don't want to give away all your secrets, but give us a yep. bit of a top line insight into uh, maybe what you've done at each end, perhaps, you know, starting yep. with the fork. Right, yeah, so what I've done with this thing is I've gone in, um, you know, I've spec it all out so I can see where everything is standard to start off with. Um, and I've gone and put some, I've gone a little bit stiffer with the, the fork springs in it. And um, it's about two rates, right? I think it was yeah, four, I think it was, I think it was roughly about two two rates yep. with the fork springs. And I've gone through and I've made the um, like shim that to make it a lot more compliant. I, you know, to make everything kind of work a lot more efficiently. It's probably a better better way to put it, I think. You know, so when you when you are making a clicker adjustment, you can actually feel the clickers working, or you, you can actually feel a difference when you actually go and do something. You know. Uh, so basically, I'm just trying to just trying to control everything as much as I can, you know. Uh, how, how do you do that? How do you manage? That? Okay, you got firmer spring rate, so it sits up in its in a, in the more compliant part of its travel. So that's yep. a big part of yep. what you're doing. But you know, the challenge obviously for a suspension guy is to have it compliant over those little roots, the little rock gardens and bits and pieces. And yet, when yep. you do a big jump or a big G out, you know, it has that progression and also gives it. You know, how do how do you go about you know like uh, walking that type of getting both. It's obviously some sort of compromise. It's it's very fiddly at times. Like there's a lot of lot of measuring. There's a lot of you know. It's not just something you can pick up a set of um, some tools and some calipers and just magically be a, like be able to shim something. But a lot of it comes down to just just making sure all the little things are correct first. Like because once again, you know these things are a, uh, are a mass-produced motorcycle or mass-produced bike with a. Um, you know, and the stuff is supposed to, is, I mean, they're trying to suit such a broad spectrum of rider, you know. Um, so once again, going back to the spring rates, you know, it makes a massive difference when you're doing, um, you know, you get your sag numbers, like pretty damn close to where they need to be. Um, and that way you can actually start going a lot more forward with the motorcycle and working out what you're doing don't like with it, you know. Yeah. And look, Jared's uh, you know like 85 kilos plus gear, so he's a little bit yep. heavier than the average guy that, the, that these production motorcycles come out for. Also a little bit faster. Also rides a fair bit of motocross, so yep. do you sort of factor that into your settings? Yeah, yeah, I tried to. <laughs> Let's just see how he goes. Well, we're hoping, hoping to go up today and have a bit of a ride, but the weather's not going to let us do that. Um, but yeah, I'm on a whole, like I, I think I'll be pretty damn happy with it. Like right. it might be. So that's four we talked about. You've gone up a couple of spring rates there. Uh, what about the shock? You've obviously gone up only about one spring rate or so on the, and it's still running, I think it's still running a progressive round spring, right? Yes, so I went up, uh, what was it? I went, I went up one rate on the shock spring. Still, like it's a, still a progressive spring, but it, it, it starts, it's still the same rate. It starts off, it starts off at the same rate, but finishes off a little bit heavier. Um, and then I've got the, like the valving in there, like shimming in there to control the um, compression and the rebound side of things, you know. Um, Are you a fan of the progressive spring? Uh, you know, I'll, a lot of people say it mimics what a, what a linkage does in terms of giving it yeah, I do, I, progression. I like them, especially on the bikes with the PDS in them because it, um, it just allows them to pick up all those real little bumps in the track, like or wherever you're riding. And then once it, um, once it gets down the track, it, it ramps up a little bit, essentially what a linkage does, you know. It's, I, I think they're pretty good. Cool. 
So no, thanks for a bit of a top line overview. We can't wait to get it back out. I think, as you say, the weather's not too good, but um, Jared, I can assume you are uh, keen to um, yeah, as soon as you can on this thing and see, uh, see how she handles. Initially, I thought it was pretty good because it would, wouldn't blow through the stroke as hard as much, but the more I started pushing this thing at a higher pace and got more used to the bike, I started to feel like it was hobby horsing a lot more under brakes and acceleration. And I also found that when I was transferring from braking into sitting down on the front of the bike, I was coming in and turning too tight and kind of knifing on me. So, Suspension something I've always wanted to get done and never have done, got done. So when the opportunity came up to work with Chris Wood's performance in WP Newcastle, we jumped at the idea. So what we did is we went up two rates in the front and about one and a, one and a half. So it was a progressive rate. So it started off in the same spot, but just as the bike traveled down more, it got slightly stiffer. So I gotta say, I'm pretty blown away with it. Um, not only gave me more confidence to ride, it's just a lot more fun to ride and less and less fatiguing. Um, I've been able to do way more riding without getting tired than I normally would. And the thing corners unbelievably well now. It doesn't come into corners and do that weird knifing thing like it used to. Um, I can go along and motocross the thing as well now. So I like to do predominantly trail riding about 80 percent but every now and then i like throwing around a motocross track and hitting small to medium sized jumps on it and it held up really well yeah it's softer so you've got to hit stuff a little bit harder to clear jumps and then you got to be a bit more cautious when you're landing on stuff make sure you time it a little bit better it's not motocross suspension but for suspension that's for dual purpose and what we like to do it's bloody awesome so we recently got to ride the top shelf WP stuff, the Explore Pro on the Husky that we have as well. That was unreal. So it's not quite at that level, but you're looking at $9,000, $9,000 for that suspension. So for something that's 1,000 to 1,200, it's a pretty damn good investment. That's not to say that the standard stuff's bad. Um, I'm around the 85 kilo plus a bit more with riding gear on. So for me, it just needed to beef it up a little bit more and hold the front up a little bit more and overall really really happy kind of don't want to give these fork and and rear shock up really don't want to move on to the next bike and go back to the standard stuff but it's something that i think i want to do to every project bike from now on for the money it's a well worth the investment so if you're into it go check out the guys at wp newcastle and chris wood's performance and they'll sort you out